Good morning, seniors. My name is Jonathan McGee, and I'm the director of social work here at the East Baton Rouge Council on Aging. And today we have Ms. Ann Rowling with Alzheimer's Services of Greater Baton Rouge. So, Ms. Ann, I want to first just thank you for giving us the opportunity to have you come in and educate our seniors and myself about your agency and the Alzheimer's disease. Um, so thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me and for allowing us to be part of your community. It's a real important part of what we do. So thank you. Good. So look, let's jump right into this. Um, so I understand that there are two memory impairments, Alzheimer's and dementia. So my first question to you is, one, can you have both of the uh, conditions? And so does one come before the other? Um, I want you to think of dementia as an umbrella. Okay. You have this big umbrella out there, and there are lots of different kinds that fall under it. Alzheimer's is about 60 to 70% of every diagnosis under that, Alzheimer, under that dementia umbrella. And basically, you, de Alzheimer's is a form of dementia, but it is just the most commonly diagnosed. The other dementias can be... Um, you may have heard Lewy body. You may have heard vascular dementia, which is heart conditions that cause dementia. All of that falls underneath this umbrella. But Alzheimer's is now the word we know, right? right. Which is wonderful. We want that word out there. We want that to be known. Um, when I was a little girl, we didn't call it Alzheimer's. Okay, my grandmother certainly had it, but she... Of course, we called her. She just wasn't herself today. She couldn't remember good anymore. She's getting senile. There's actually, you know, they know so much more about this disease and so much more about dementias in general and the brain in general. So when you talk about dementias and Alzheimer's, I want you to just think of that umbrella and know that there's lots of different kinds under there and that when you say Alzheimer's, it is the most common known and the most common um, difficulty in the dementias okay so tell me this because of course with this uh disease it just doesn't affect the client it affects those people around them that are closest to them the people that care for them family members so what support groups are there or resources for the right. family or the client? Right. We estimate that in EBR parish and its surrounding parishes um, that there are about 20,000 people affected and for every person affected we estimate that there are two to three other persons really living with this disease right mm -hmm. so that's 60,000 plus people in our community alone that are dealing with Alzheimer's personally either as the affected individual mm -hmm. or caregiving so there are so many needs out there that we need to reach um, we have re we have our daily resource and our weekly resource is what we call Charlie's Place, which is an award-winning day respite program that you can bring your loved one for a minimum fee, and we have scholarships available for those who can't afford that fee. Um, and they we engage them in a way that is um, loving, person-driven care for that individual. So that allows that caregiver to take a break not only take a break but learn what works for that person even at home okay so of course we're in COVID and we can't do Charlie's Place every day but we do virtual we do activity kits for all of those families so we want those families who are affected not to pull away during COVID but to come in because we know that those caregivers are dealing with a lot more now than they even were prior to this and this is a tough disease you can make that person really happy who's affected, but that person, those people who are caregiving, this can be very, very tough on them. Okay. So, and I heard you say that each person or client is gonna it's gonna be different. So it's not the disease doesn't affect everybody the same. So I've heard rumors of a term they say called sundowning, mm -hmm. where seniors kind of get a little agitated as the sun sets. Can you tell me a little bit about that or tell our audience? Absolutely. So um, one of the difficulties with Alzheimer's disease is that um, your brain, the part of your brain that registers time and place is mostly affected, okay? But um, Alzheimer's is dynamic. How you would experience and how it would be for me would be two very different 
diseases per se, okay. actions, behaviors. So some things are common. One of those um, common difficulties is sundowning where in the afternoons generally you have a change of caregiver generally the news is on and lots of activity going on and then the sun begins to set and they don't necessarily understand and as you know you know just darkness can bring on fears alone if you don't know why it's happening anymore and you don't know that it's coming you know we all have a pace to days and if you don't have a pace and you're not really secure where you are, suddenly it gets dark and you go, oh my goodness. And all these anxieties are normal. And they call that sundowning and they get very, they can get, not all people. Um, I had an aunt and an uncle, both with it. She was his caregiver. He was never really affected by sundowning. She, when, when it began to affect her, then she had them both upset. All afternoon and all night, they wouldn't sleep. Right. because she didn't understand anymore and we can help um, those families who are going through that there are some basic things you can do you can't make it go away okay sundowning is in some people part of the disease but it can be lessened and it can be easier coped with where you and them don't have this daily battle um, which is very common with sundowners and their caregivers. It's a tough, tough situation. You're exhausted. You've been working all day, right? Right. And here they've been kind of resting, and then the afternoon it's like, oh, my goodness, they found a new life. It's like a baby that wakes up at 1 a.m. in the morning. You go, uh, go back to sleep, right? And they don't. So it's just a um, – and I don't like to compare seniors to babies, um, but you do have to – in some sorts think of this as a caregiving situation and with a lot of respect for their age and a lot of respect for their life experiences so it's very hard when it's your parent what do you mean it's nighttime mom what what's the problem right, right? but you know your mom knew all her life what what day and night were and then suddenly it's very confusing for them and so if if we can engage our caregivers in a lot of education that can help them through these difficulties that's what we do at alzheimer's we're your one-stop shop for resources for these caregivers and families who need so much information because again how it affects you and how it affects me are going to be two different things so my family's going to need what we see affecting me right. your family's going to need what they see affecting you and we do it very personally okay so Tell me this, what are some signs? So if, if I'm a, a new caregiver, I'm taking care of my mom or my dad, what should I be looking for to say, well, maybe mom has Alzheimer's or dementia? So one of the first things I like to say is um, when they no longer do what they have done every day, okay? okay? So if you have a mom who got up every day, went outside, tended to her garden, made her breakfast she might be making breakfast but then she sits she doesn't want to go outside anymore right. she for her she may not remember that she needs to go outside for her she may also no longer really be able to do the steps that gardening calls for but she doesn't know she doesn't know right. you observe she's not doing it um the other thing is you know of course um, we all lose our keys every now and again, right? right. When losing things um, become um, affecting your daily life, all right? Mm -hmm. um, you routinely can't find your keys. You routinely get lost. Your mom is driving and she takes a wrong turn and you go, my mom, no, the grocery's this way. No, it's not. It's this way. I know which way it is, right? right? I've been going to the grocery all my life. Don't tell me how to go to the grocery. Yes, I get it. That's a pretty good sign. So, number one, that it really affects their daily life. Number two, that they change personally. Number three, this, you know, and I don't like to say let's start questioning your mom and dad because it, it creates anxiety. If you're a person who's lost their memory and you go, don't you know today's Wednesday? right so that's the hard thing but they probably may not know it's Wednesday and if you're observing that that may be another um, sign um, the other thing I like to say is that um, when you're looking for words 
and words that you know or names that you know your mom and dad have known all their lives and suddenly they're not there for them and you see them begin to hesitate that's another pretty good sign somebody needs to be looked at um and sometimes that can be quite a challenge to get that senior or that person affected you know i'm in my late 50s uh we have people who are affected every day in their late 50s so we really have to be cognizant of what's um you know how we approach those affected individuals so that they positively understand this is coming from a place of care we want we're trying this is what we're observing and um, are you feeling like that most of them have you know if they're at that point most persons affected have some fear about this like you know it's it's hard to be an adult and not remember everything you've known all your life right right that's a tough that's a tough road um those are some of the basic signs jonathan to start with um to begin to maybe question do we need to look at this um and i like to tell people aging normal aging occurs all right but you know plenty 90 year olds who know who you are where they are what's going on Mm -hmm. and you know plenty who pretty much know a good bit okay aging is sort of like freckles you get a few freckles Mm -hmm. it's kind of normal you know losing a little bit of memory that's not so bad we we live if they live to be 80 something and 90 something more power right Right. but when that forgetfulness takes those freckles take over your whole arm those are things you need to begin to there may be some help out there that can slow that process down for you so so before we get to the help part i want to ask you this what's the youngest person that you know that has been affected by this disease um, we we had a, a client um, who's in his 40s who's um, developmentally delayed young man um, he's disabled and um, he has been a Charlie's was a Charlie's place client for some time um, because not only was he you know his brain function began to be um, affect his memory um, anything earlier than 65 is considered early onset Alzheimer's so 65 and above um, is pretty common and known as just Alzheimer's disease. But um, we have, I have family members myself who have been diagnosed in their late 40s and early 50s. Um, sometimes that medicine works, there is medicine out there that can help, you know, and sometimes that can slow that disease. But um, pretty much early onset, is known to be a pretty quick and aggressive um, Alzheimer's process Um, and so that that um, can be pretty tough on families when it's a mom you know in her late 50s with teenage kids and you begin to you know they notice things about their mom and that's that's a tough tough road so are you seeing this more in males or females or is it an equal amount it's not equal sad to say um, females are uh, nine to one is males and six to one is females. So for every six women you see, one will get Alzheimer's. For every nine men you see, one will get Alzheimer's. They're not sure what causes all that. There's lots of research out there. But we all know women in our, in our society and across the world live longer than men. Okay. So naturally this is a disease of the aged so as the aged progresses if they're less men to you know age then they're less men who will get it but i always like to tell women they don't know if it's age or if it's hormonal issues they there's some indicators that it could be past menopause that causes some of these Um, they just don't quite know yet Um, pennington biomedical um, research center right here in baton rouge is one of the leading researchers on some of these um diabetes and menopause issues with alzheimer's right here in our own city okay so now how do we go about seeing if mom or dad actually has the condition so is there a form that we need to fill out do we go directly to our doctor or is it kind of like oops she put the keys in the refrigerator you have it (laughs) (laughs) it's not i would say if she put her keys in the refrigerator you you should do what i'm about to advise you to do Mm -hmm. it's called a memory screening you can go to your local doctor and request it you can come to us and get it for free 
this month in November Awareness Month, Alzheimer's Services is booking every thir- every Friday, um, and we're doing virtual screenings by phone or by Zoom. Um, so anybody can call and make an appointment. Um, our website is alzbr.org. Okay. And you can call us, and we will um, book you for our memory and your family member for a memory screening. Um, doctors can do memory screenings, internists. You can go directly to a neurologist, and we can refer you. We have a bank of neurologists who regularly screen for Alzheimer's and dementias. Um, here in Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas. So if that's something you think your family may need, your loved one may need, please call us so we can guide you through that. It's pretty scary, right? right. So absolutely. There's, it's a five-question memory screening. We used to do them in person, and now we do them uh, virtually uh, okay. so everyone can be safe. I mean, we are dealing with seniors, right? That's right. who we're serving, um, mostly. So... Um, is really important to get early diagnosis, and this is what I really love to encourage. It's a tough disease to admit, right? So, but the sooner you know it, the better you can plan. Who's gonna take care of you? Can I get medicine that helps me? Um, How do I cope well? There are skills and tasks that we can help guide you through that can help you postpone Um, and prolong this disease in a very healthy, positive manner, as opposed to many of them, um, you know, are very embarrassed by their memory. My husband is a dementia patient. Um, He had brain surgery, and he um, has memory issues. He can no longer work. Um, He, for about a year, wouldn't even go to the Y because he was going to see people he knew and He didn't recognize them, right? Mm -hmm. It takes a lot to encourage people into good, positive activities. Mm -hmm. And so we we like to say, get that memory screening early so that you can plan for yourself and we can help you through that. Okay. And you also mentioned earlier that uh, this is National uh, Alzheimer's Awareness Month. So how does your organization put that out there and what do you guys do to get people engaged absolutely well um, of course we run a lot of marketing and ads and uh, we want baton rouge to know that we're out here and that we're here to help Um, we do memory screenings we do special educations this month today at noon we'll do a financial literacy you just call get the link free it's online Um, of course you have to have somebody who can get you on that computer so that can be a challenge for seniors, but we encourage them. Um, and we, we actually can help you do that. I mean, literally by the phone. Um, we have magnificent programs through grants and uh, relationships with LSU where um, we're doing some research um, and we're putting that out this month. We've given out, I think they've given out all their 50 iPads um, to families who need telemedicine. Um, so that's an awareness. We're also um, doing some TLCs specifically with our Charlie's Place and our caregivers, what we call tender loving care events, where we reach out specifically to those families that we know are still involved in this um, ongoing battle with Alzheimer's and do special activities for them this month. Um, Perkins Row. If you want to go out on Thursday evenings this month, you can go and buy a ticket for an outdoor concert, and they will give us part of their proceeds and promote November Awareness right there at Perkins Road. Go to their website. It is um, really fun and a great way to do it. So that's some of the things we're doing to reach out. Coming here and being with you today is one of those November Awareness reach outs that we really appreciate and think is so important. Okay, well, I appreciate you coming, Miss Ann. You've given us a wealth of information. And just so you seniors know, anytime I have a question about this condition, I go straight to Alzheimer's <laughs> Services. Um, I've been working with them for years, uh, even before I came to the Council on Aging, and um, they have shown to be very thorough and uh, a friend to our agency in helping our seniors uh, battle this condition. And once again, thank you, and uh, I appreciate you giving us your time. Gracious and happy to do it. Thank you.